So I'm Lucas, uh, I work at Everyday Robots at uh, Google X, and I'm a human robot interaction designer there. And I'm Gotham, I'm a creative technologist in the Google Creative Lab, and we work on a really wide range of apps, services, hardware, anything to help bring some of the Google magic out to our users. So our, our workshop is called a Tinker's Guide to the AI Galaxy. Uh, and basically what that means is we're trying to uh, give people the tools to uh, put into their creative practice some kind of AI and machine learning. We're mainly doing this through the use of Teachable Machine, which is a website that lets people train their own machine learning models with no code required, and uh, mixing that with physical computing, which lets us create outputs that affect the real world. When I was a student here, I attended a bunch of the workshops and um, lectures that were hosted in the studio, and they were always um, hugely impactful on me. Um, so to get the opportunity to try and pass, pass on some of our knowledge um, to students was very exciting. And yeah, it's like a, a place that just it, and it doesn't really have uh, a, like you're not really put into a box, and so you can be far more experimental, and um, you can be occasionally like irreverent and curious, and it's a, it's just a generally wonderful place. I'm uh, extremely thankful for. I really want the students to come away with, um, as Lucas said, you know, uh, certain abilities and skills, but also um, just the knowledge that there are always tools and. Um, techniques out there that can let you add whatever technology you want to your projects, even if you may not see yourself as having a, a certain expertise in that area. I, I think a main goal here is for somebody that's not very technical to be able to use these kind of machine learning models as material. Like, we always want to make work easier and funnier. Like, just generally, the more fun you're having while you're working on projects, like, you come up with some really engaging stuff when, when, you, when you kind of like lean into the humor of what you're doing. Keep pursuing the things that um, interest you, even if um, they don't fit within your department, and even if you're told um, not to not to go down certain paths. And once I realized, like, okay, I will be able to figure like any of these problems out, even if they seem like really advanced um, technologies, that just kind of made me um, appreciate the fact that I could learn anything given enough time and repetition. Um, and I think. Realizing that then led to the, this concept that like tenacity is really the, the key to solving some of these technical problems because a lot of the time it doesn't, it's not even a really um, sophisticated solution that's required. It's something that's simple that no one saw. Hello everyone, I'm Harley from Undergrad School of Architecture. And I'm Chloe, I'm in computational design, also in the architecture department. Okay. Um, yeah, so I can go ahead. Um, we made a fan detector. Um, so we have a bunch of different shapes, like so, this might be a fan, this could be a fan. And then we have non-fan shapes, which are shaped like this. Um, kind of like fans, they might not be detected as fans. And we wanted our system to detect if it's a fan or not, and it would spin if it's a fan. And if it's not a fan, it wouldn't move. <laughs> so, for some demonstrations, if we attach a carefully crafted fan onto this motor, then it would. <laughs> it would oh, wow! It 100% works. <laughs> we just carefully disconnect that. And now it's a non fan in the world. <laughs> and now, if we want to try more non fans, like this L shaped thing here. Uh huh. Not a fan. Reject it. Not a fan. Whatever. <laughs> Yay! I'm undergrad in Mechie Architecture, and... I am Angie, I'm an undergrad in BCSA. Yeah, and this is the upper bringer upper. <laughs> <laughs> so, currently Angie's sitting at her desk, she's doing some work. You know, she wants a little bit of a snack, so she's gonna reach and treat herself. And you know, after sitting down for a long time, maybe she, maybe she wants to change things up, stand up for a little bit. The good news is, her snacks can now come with her. Yay! <laughs> and now if I want to go down, I want my snacks to come down. <laughs> hey, I'm Brian. And I'm Jenna. Uh, we created hot coffee. Uh, we wanted to ensure that the coffee you're drinking is of the correct temperature. Um, so we use this super fun thermal imaging 
camera here, and we have it very nicely uh, inputted into a webcam because that was the easiest input we can find. Uh, it's calibrated so that the temperature should be between 155 and 175, uh, 175 being the ideal temperature for uh, coffee. If it's too hot, it will show up as red. Unfortunately, uh, we only have uh, one temp water at this point, um, but you can sort of see mm -hmm. it coming through there. And then, uh, so code is not fully functional yet, but we have a, uh, a wonderful little uh, visual aid that shows you rising steam. Oh, <laughs> no. Has it disappeared? Uh, falling not steam. Anything falling steam right now. Um, that rises and essentially animates with. Uh, when it's I will edit it together. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There'll be there'll be a cut. It, it'll no one will no one will know that there was a cut and an and elision. And the, what was the danger zone? The we're changing a calibration. 180 degrees is problematic. Is Cal recalibrating the steam. Oh. oh so. Yeah. Just mold, run it, loop it, loop it through. Oh. Um, right, yeah. Run it, run the video in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Harry Nasek. I am in the BESA program of electrical peer engineering and art. Um, so here at the studio, we make a lot of coffee, but sometimes the frustration of the studio staff, people don't make coffee properly. We make the machine have to be clean. It's a horrible catastrophe. Anyway, to make sure it doesn't happen, we want to make sure that no one can start the machine without a coffee filter. So if we open the machine, it's going to tell if there's no coffee filter, and it's going to scream at you if there's no coffee filter. So if you were to pour grinds in, it would still scream at you and be really sad. But as soon as you put in your filter and the coffee with that, it'll stop screaming at you and you can make your coffee. Yay.